indigo. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be making an beat by sampling an anime. And what I'm going to do to find the anime sample is I'm going to go digging on YouTube and see if I can find something that sounds good and then turn into a beat. And I'm going to show you guys the process. So yeah, you can leave me a comment if you have any questions about anything. But let's get started. So I'm going to come in here and just look up anime samples. And yeah, we're definitely going to get a lot of copyrights on this video. kind of want to find one random anime samples in Japanese. So start listening. Also, I probably already sampled a lot of these too. For a lot of beats on my channel. On the main channel, Indigo. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that sounds pretty chill actually. I never heard this. Yeah, I really love this already, so once I find a sample that I just really like, I look up YouTube to MP3, and now we're going to try to, you know what, I think that website's a scam, so you got to figure out which website actually works. There's not very many good ones to download from YouTube right now. Because it's not really the best way to get samples, but this is just how I'm going to show you. This is just a way that you can do it, and I'm showing you in this video. I can show you some other ways to get samples later. But for now, this is the this is a really good way to find some samples and to make some beats. Alright, now it looks like we have the download link, so I'm just going to download that. And I'm going to just close this for now. Close this. Let's open up FL Studio. That's what I'm going to be using for the DAW. Now that we have FL Studio open, I'm going to grab that sample that we just downloaded from Downloads. Right here. And let's take a listen to the sample. I'm already getting started, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab the side of this on the pencil mode and just try to drag this right to where the sample begins. And then once I have that, I can drag it back and I can have it start right when the actual first chord hits. Now what I'm going to be doing is just listening and finding a good spot to loop it at. And I already really know where I'm going to loop it. It's going to be right when these drums come in. But we can just hear it out and listen for the looping. I think it's like right here would be a good spot to loop it right even before those two chords come in these like bass notes because I think that'll that's not so I'm just gonna say that 
each one of these numbers is a bar. That's what they're called. And you want to do the drums four bars at a time. And so you want to get it to line up to be at least 16 bars. You don't want to have it to be like 13 bars and loop it. Because it's just not going to line up with the drums. So you either want it to be looping at 8. Or like right at 9. You end it at 9 because it's going to loop for 8 bars. Or at 16. And since this sample was a bit longer than the 9. I'm just going to stretch it out to 16. Because I think that'll sound better. And yeah. Let's just see what it sounds like after doing that. I'm just going to loop it at the first bar. I'm going to take out the first bar and loop that for eight bars. And yeah, I think that'll work for what we want. So I'm just going to find the spot right where I want to loop it at the end of here. <laughs> and yeah, I usually just loop it right before the next note would come in. So it sounds pretty natural when we loop it back to the beginning because it'll sound like it's anticipating the next note that's going to come in so it should sound pretty good and now sometimes the sample goes like it doesn't line up and it goes over so you just kind of have to stretch it until it fits there and now let's go back and we're going to be able to loop it but it'll automatically loop because we have nothing else laid out so let's just listen to it and hear how it loops I think that loops pretty good. It's here with the metronome. I think it sounds pretty good, so we can probably just loop that and start working on some drums for this. But also, I'll definitely decrease the BPM a bit so that it's a bit slower because I think that'll sound good. Maybe to 120. And now I'm going to get some drums out. And for this, I'm going to be using the DJ Smokey kit that just came out. You can go grab that on his website. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But you can also just find some funk drums on the internet. I'm going to be using the DJ Smokey kit because I really like it. So I'm going to grab some kicks. And then I'm going to need a hat. I'm gonna find something that sounds nice. <clears throat> Alright, now that I got some drums picked out, I'm gonna start off just by putting these hi hats all the way. And I'm not gonna leave it like this, just going on every note. I just did that so that I would fill it out. And then I'm gonna right click on the hi hat and say fill each two steps. And that's just a pretty easy way to fill it out just for this whole hi hat right here. And I'm going to add in some kicks, and I'm going to place them strategically so that they sound pretty nice. And yeah, you'll get kind of used to where the kicks sound like, but let's hear how this sounds when we put it on. Some hi-hats going on every two notes, two steps, and then these kicks in this really basic pattern. But I think it'll sound pretty good. So let's take a listen.
So maybe I could use a little bit of stretching backwards. It sounds like it's a little bit off. Just try to get this to line up. And we gotta get right here on the five. We gotta get that to line up. I think that's lined up pretty well. Yeah, I think we had it. We had the sample kind of wrong. So I just moved it a little bit so that it hits better. And this should be better. Charger real quick. All right, got plugged into the charger, got the microphone stable, so let's get back to cooking this beat. Whoops, oh wait, we don't need that, we don't need that speaker that I just dropped. But yeah, the thing that we need now is some snares on this drum pattern, we don't have any snares. So I'm kind of thinking it's like, and then we'll have a bouncy snare here. And then we'll finish off the snare pattern. Pretty regular for now. Let's hear how that sounds. And also, let's just skip ahead to the actual drums. That sounded really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy those that or this part with the drums and I'm gonna paste it again. And now what I'm thinking is I wanna actually separate this hi-hat part. So we'll go over here and we'll right click on here and we'll press cut. And now that'll actually take this out. <coughs> it'll delete it and it'll also save it to the clipboard. So now we can go over here and open up a new pattern paste it back and we'll have the same hi-hats that we had and now we can put these back down for the first part but then we're going to go and create a new pattern and we can paste those hi-hats again in here and we're going to do that for the third part but on this pattern three we're going to switch up the hi-hats so they sound pretty fire when we go into this next section so we can go into here into the hi-hats and we're going to do some adjustments to make these sound a bit more fire than just the basic hi-hats that we had before so the first thing i'm gonna do is go up in the tools and press randomize and now if this is your first time pressing the randomizer you'll probably have this pattern thing on and it's gonna look like all crazy but you can turn that off and go down here and it'll just be have the levels mode selected and you can use that to mess with the velocity and have it set random velocities for your notes and also even for the panning, you can have random panning. And this helps a lot with just making it random. And I usually go in here and tweak these anyways. And this kind of just helps with that process and makes it a bit faster for me. So I like to using this randomizer for that. So I'll just go in here and do it a little bit so it does a little bit of variation in the hi-hats. And then accept that. And whoops, it looks like I switched patterns here. Let's go back here. So yeah, what I'm thinking is when we go in here, I want to do like a big 
hi-hat roll right here so let's do I'm gonna go up here and click on the magnet and change the the note locking to third step and I'm gonna go in here and every two lines I'm gonna place them until right here on the middle and that's where the clap or the snare would be so I'm just gonna do a hi-hat roll until then and then we're gonna do this and then let's just listen to how it sounds for now and we can even watch it as it goes along so I think like right here we could add another hi-hat roll and I'm still using third step and keep listening I think we should add some, we should switch it to 4th step and add some more high rolls right here. Like right before the snare hit, we could add one. And then also, I'm thinking right when this kick hits, we can add a big one. And see how that sounds. Maybe even we can do for these, for this higher roll, I'll bring it down a few steps and see how that sounds. Now I'm thinking that at the end here we should also have, we should delete the last notes and have a few like lower notes hit. And I think that'll sound pretty nice. Copy this and loop it real quick so that uh, we missed it. But if you copy and loop it in, in time, you can keep it going, and keep the beat playing. But that's what I want to do, just keep going. And let's add in some open hats. So I'm gonna find a good open hat that sounds nice, and I'm gonna put that right here on the first on every fifth bar ever. just for a little while I'm gonna do it right up here and I'm gonna do it again but faster oh wait <laughs> I forgot you have to, sometimes you gotta click and press turn off use loop options using the loop options it'll be going <laughs> way too fast <laughs> sounding crazy but yeah what I'm playing is now I created another one where I'm, I go twice as fast as I had I heard the open hats a weird as that sounds so let's copy this again paste it here okay Take the last one and we'll go, we'll take it out of order and put it down. And it'll sound like, yeah, just a few notes down there. It'll sound good. All right, now that we have the hi hats and the open hats in place, we can go in and start adding some perks in. So for the perks, what I like to do is just find a few perks that I like. So I'm thinking like a sleigh bell. And then something like this triangle. 
Sounds really nice. So what we're going to do is I'm thinking right after the snare, we're going to do some sleigh bells. And then right on after that, maybe when the kick hits, we're going to do this long bell. And then another one on this other kick. And then we'll go in with some more sleigh bells up here. And we'll see how that sounds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it on a few spots that I think it'll sound nice, which is like just right here, uh, just random spots, but kind of spaced out and kind of repetitive too, so that you can almost think that there there's some strategic planning to this. And maybe I'll put it again up here. And now we can go up and let's add in my beat tag real quick indigo and i guess we can't really we also need to do a few more things before this is really done tweaking wise and the first thing is let's open up this uh, sample by clicking on it and we'll see the controls on it and up here on this track you'll see that there's no track selected it's just a few dots we actually want to scroll until we get to a track that we want and what I like to use is 10 I like to use number 10 for the track for my samples and what that means is when we go up here to these uh, switches up here and we click on that this is our mixing bar where we can mix all of our tracks and real quickly let's go over here and click on the master mix and you'll see that the fruity limiter is enabled I don't know if it's enabled on your FL studio but it's because that I just pressed new basic 808 with limiter, which is just the default FL Studio startup thing. But I actually want to turn off the limiter because that's going to make the kicks in the 808s a bit quieter so that they sound better. But then also it's going to throw off the mix because it's kind of changing the way that it sounds. So that was on the master mix track, and I'm just turning that off so we'll be able to mix it better. But from there, I'm going to go over here to this number 10 mixer track and I'm going to come over here and click on one of these slots and we're going to add in a new effect and what I'm going to do is fruity parametric EQ2 and this is some equalizer so we can mess with the frequencies and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go up here and click on this uh, first one and I'm going to change the mode until it's a slope and I'm going to bring it over to about 200. And what that's going to do is cut off the low end from the sound. And that's going to be like all the bass notes. If you look up here, you'll see like sub, bass. It's going to take out all of those frequencies from the sound, which is going to allow the bass that we're going to add in to sound a lot better. And it's not going to collide with the sample. And this is a really important step in mixing your beats is to allow space for the 808s. And you need to make sure that the sample is, doesn't have too much bass and sub or else it's gonna really collide and sound really muddy so now that we have that done i'm also going to add some reverb to the sample so that sounds a bit more echoey and cloudy so i'm going to use fruity reverb too and i'm going to change the mode up here to big mode change the dry a bit up the wet and then move down the er and i'm going to come over here and turn that to like about 50 percent reverb and this is just the mix, so that's going to be how much of the reverbs affecting the sample. And for this, I think only half, because since we went big mode, that means it's going to be a lot of reverb. So now let's hear how that sounds so far. Indigo. So it sounds like pretty good. <clears throat> I'm honestly going to move down the pitch a little bit because I think it might sound better a little bit slower. 
and I'm going to start adding in some 808s to add some bass notes. So what I'm going to do is up here with these kicks, I'm just going to copy the kick and paste it in the next one. And that's going to be where I do the 808 on. But I need to go in here and find an 808 that I like first. So I'm going to go in here to the DJ Smokey Kit. And this 808 sounds pretty good. I'm going to drag it over to where that spot was. I had the... I just pretty much copied the click or the kick. I copied those notes and I pasted them in onto this clap under here. But now I replaced it with the 808. Now we can open this up. And I see that the time is affected. So I'm going to right click on this and reset it because since the time was affected, that means that if I was to change the time on the piano roll, it wouldn't change how it sounded. Yeah. So now that we did that, I'm going to open up the piano roll and I'm going to stretch out these notes so that they're a bit longer because right now they're just really short and they're going to sound weird because 808 notes are they're going to be like cut off really short and we really want our notes to be really long so we just have to drag these out until they're longer and now we just have them going all at the same on the same note c note and that's fine for now we can just play it and hear how that sounds sounds really nice but the 808 is like it's kind of sounds like muddy and it sounds kind of weird and that's because all these 808s are they're like overlapping and kind of messing with each other and a way that we can fix that is go into here and click on the 808 and go into here on the tool settings and we can say cut self and what that's going to do is it's going to group and it's going to cut the sample by itself so that whenever the next 808 note will play it'll forget about the old note and stop playing that so it's not going to be overlapping and it's just going to go right to the next note and that's what i do to make my 808s not overlap so now that i got that set up i want to change the actual note that we're hitting on because having it hit on the same note is pretty boring so I'm going to add a little bit of switch up in there. Let's hear how that sounds. We might even want a little bit more switch up than that. So let's start it up here. And I'm going to start it off like boom, boom. And do a good bit of switching up. And let's hear how that sounds. Kind of have it dragged out a bit. I'm going to make this part kind of half just for a switch up. And let's hear this out now.
soon to go. Now that sounds really nice. some sort of switch up at some point and you can really choose whenever you want to do that but I'm just gonna test it out at the end for now and for that what I like to do is just take the same loop I've been using and if I was looping on a huge sample and I still have the whole sample I'll just stretch it out a bit more and see what the next part of the sample sounds like and I'll listen to that and see if that sounds good <laughs> Now I'm thinking like I might take just a few parts like right where the piano is hitting. I'll take those out. And I'm also going to stretch it so that it's a bit different speed so that the piano hits when I want it to. But I don't want it to affect the previous sample that I had. So the way that I can do that is by clicking on it with the left click and say uh, just make unique. And that'll make it unique. So that when we stretch it over here, it's not going to affect the previous sample. So now that we got that, we can go over here and listen to it. But yeah, what I want to do is stretch it a bit. So that we can just loop this part. Maybe we'll loop it back shorter. find a good spot to loop it at. actually one part that I don't like is these open hats let's go in here and let's do the randomized thing on it so that they're a bit different note volume but also mostly what we want to do is just go and move these to a track I'm gonna do track 15 and what we're gonna do on there is add some reverb which is gonna really soften the open hats a bit some reverb and then also we can just turn down the overall volume from there a bit and even this is right down here is like a fast EQ, so I'm just gonna use this to crank off a little bit of the a little bit of the low end on the open hats. And now let's listen to the full beat again. And I think this is pretty much good for this video on how to make a chill beat sampling an anime. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. And if you wanna talk to me, then. Uh, you can hit me up on WaveClouds, just make an account and send me a chat request and I'll accept that and talk to you guys. And yeah, you can s check out my new beats there and I'll make some more videos if you guys want. And I, I just feel like it because it's fun. So yeah, let's listen to this whole beat now. In to go.